in your group, when you get your whiteboard, you're going to set it up like this. We're going to be working on number three, four, five, and six. So you want your grid to be set up with four different areas. Let's do one more together. The key concepts that we wanted the students to learn were really the cause and effect relationships that existed between the different water quality tests we'd been performing throughout the lab activity. So if one person from each group could please go get your whiteboard, make sure everybody has markers to use, I'm gonna let you get started. Our goal is to have the kids talking with each other as much as possible. They learn a lot more discussing ideas with their peers than they do listening to the teachers explaining it all to them. It's not just about the content itself, but also about the, the process of working together with their other uh, classmates and thinking through the ideas and listening to other perspectives. Increases. So one of the reasons why we picked this particular activity was because it's a really difficult concept for the kids to grasp and understand. We thought this would be a way for them to leave with a clearer understanding and feel more confident about the material by trying to uncover a lot of the meaning themselves. What process do we think bacteria are going to be performing in the ecosystem? Taking out oxygen and putting in carbon dioxide. Exactly. How am I going to show that on a graph? First they're seeing how they should be going through it. When I modeled it as the I do, I was pretty much thinking aloud for them to see how many different pieces of information they needed to combine in order to come up with their responses, kind of the thinking steps that they should go through on their own. Then we, we did it together as a class in more of a discussion format so that they could see how they would be doing it if they were working independently. I want you to try to draw a line for each one of these scenarios based on what you think right now. And then finally was the they do. And before I had them working in groups, I asked all the kids to try to do it just by themselves and get an idea on paper because it makes it a little bit less intimidating for them. Yep, They have something already that's set to go, it lets them join the conversation with a little more confidence. When you get your whiteboard, you're gonna set it up like this. We're gonna be working on number three, four, five, and six. So you want your grid to be set up with four different areas, one for each of these graphs. I'm gonna give everybody the analyzing card. And the ideas that I want you to focus in on first are number one, two, and three. For the conversations that you're having with your group members, these are going to come in the most handy for what we're doing today. So yeah, temperature goes up. But they should be, when the temperature goes up, yeah, it would be going down. Science discourse strategy is valuable because it makes the class more enjoyable for the students. They feel comfortable working with their peers in a structured environment with many support pieces in place for them already. The discourse uh, tools that we gave them, the little cheat sheet of the graph paper, they don't feel like they're starting from nowhere. We're guiding them to the right responses and to have something to say to their peers without them feeling that they're left trying to figure it all out on their own. By the end of the discussion, you can hear how much more they understand and how much they've gained from the activity. Take a look at what each group has come up with and see if we're all in agreement. Let's make sure you leave here without any misconceptions.